More than 16 years after it was established, the Guantanamo Bay detention camp is still open. And the five men accused of plotting the September 11th attacks, including the alleged mastermind Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, are still here. Today was the start of the 29th round of pre-trial hearings, which he regularly attends. No trial date has been set. The team defending Mohammed travels to Guantanamo Bay every six weeks or so. They rarely let cameras into their meetings. We want to take our seats here because we do have some stuff to talk about. So who all was watching court today? Everybody? What, what happened? <laughs> I heard Groharing say <clears throat> and affirm that the things that Abu Hamza says to us are not uh, classified. The team, appointed by the Department of Defense, is made up of military and civilian lawyers. They're led by David Nevin. He says the delays are due to the government withholding information about what was done to his client. What role has torture played in A, choosing to have the trial here at Military Commission, and B, in terms of the obstacles and delays that you're now facing? Our sense is that it's, it, it has played every role, that it's the reason we're here. You have the, this contradiction of a secret show trial where they're trying to protect this, the secrets of the torture and yet have this show trial, because what is a show trial? It's something where the outcome doesn't really matter. They're not ever going to release Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Do you have any sense of what they thought or hoped would happen by having it here? Oh, I think initially they expected to have, you know, uh, a, a bunch of tortured men come out, reject American attorneys, plead guilty and accept death as martyrs, and that almost did happen. I would like to Nevin and his team say that by being prohibited from investigating torture, they are unable to build the defense they are duty-bound to provide. So if you did have a document saying on, on such and such a day, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed said he was responsible for 9-11, at the minute, if he had been waterboarded for four days before that statement was made, are you able to discover that? Well, no. We simply have uh, uh, fairly vague uh, summary statements of what uh, our clients are supposed to have said, but none of the atmospheric detail that surrounds them making those statements. And so you know that if we had some time with you on a waterboard, we could probably before very long get you to admit that you were the mastermind of 9-11. It is the independent duty of the defense to conduct its own thorough investigation. And if the defense does not do that, they are not being ethical. And what would you say to people, as, as many people have said, you're against the death penalty, you're against trial by a trial like this by military commission, so you're just dragging this out as, as long as you possibly can? Uh, that's absolutely incorrect. Uh, we're doing uh, what's necessary to make the case be a fair prosecution. And it has to be a fair prosecution. It doesn't make any difference how big the case is, uh, how awful the circumstances of 9-11 were, it's a, it's a criminal prosecution in the United States of America, and it has to be fair. Nevin is based in Boise, Idaho. He graduated from law school here in 1978 and never left. He's been defending Mohammed for the last decade. I mean, just in terms of the books on the shelf, this is years of your life. It really is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you first took this on, did you have any idea it would have this much impact and last this long? Um, I had no idea it would last this long. I don't think anyone did. According to a government transcript, Mohammed told the court in 2007 that he was responsible for 9-11 from A to Z. But Nevin believes that statement is meaningless if his client was tortured into making it. He says that keeping such information secret is exactly why the government chose to try Mohammed and the others here in a military commission and not federal court. This decision, Nevin adds, means that none of the charges even apply to his client. I, I don't know if, if you can or will answer this question, but, and I, maybe I'm even using the wrong word, but do you believe your client is, is innocent of the charges? What do you mean by innocent? Do you mean not guilty as charged? Yeah. Yes, he's not guilty as charged. Not guilty of... He's not guilty of, of violating the laws of war. Because there was no war on September 11th. So then... If... I mean, you, 
Please understand what I'm saying. I'm articulating a technical problem with the nature of the charges, as opposed to speaking to the question of whether or not Mr. Muhammad was actually a planner of the attacks of September 11th. But he's not charged with being a planner of the attacks of September 11th. He's charged with murder in violation of the law of war. That's all he's charged with. He's not charged with others. I mean, there are other charges, but they are all violations, they are all allegations of violations of the law of war, nothing else. That could be a victory, that, that they are responsible for 9-11, let's say responsible, not guilty, but they could be acquitted because this is a military commission, not a civilian court. That, that's, a, that's a very possible outcome. Yes. And what would happen then? I take it that they would spend the rest of their lives at Guantanamo Bay or in some similar place because the government has said they'll never be released. While these issues are being fought out, the Department of Defense invites victim family members to Gitmo to witness proceedings. Gil Arano went last August, coming face to face with the men accused of murdering his brother. It's one thing to imagine knowing that, that you know, you're confronting the person who murdered your family member in a courtroom. It's another thing to understand that you're confronting the person who murdered your family member and 2,975 other people at the same time. The moment that they um, walked in and sat down, there were so many emotions simultaneously. Everything from just anger and hatred to I mean, almost the kind of disappointment because you're looking at, at, at Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and here's a guy who, you know, is that all there is? And, and even in that moment, you're able to accept and, and even admire the, the due process that's, that's going on in front of you. Look, I, I've got a problem. You know, I sit here and I say to you that this is about character and what people do and, and, and it's also about the character of the country and how the country acts. I'm pretty much opposed to the death penalty, right? I'm willing to make an exception in this case, and I struggle to reconcile those two things. You know, you're probably in a, in a unique position where you're a lawyer and a victim family member. You, you probably have had conversations with family members who don't have a lawyer's perspective. Oh my God, yeah, of course. I mean, I know they've said to me, what on earth is going on? Right. Why are we talking about all these different things, and they're even saying the policy here is clearly just obstruct, delay, uh, and not get to the, the actual trial. What, 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 do you, what do you say to them? It's our character that's on trial as a country in the same way that, that any individual's character is relevant and judged by their acts. So, so we have to act better, not just say we're better. What's your sense of you know, when this is likely to actually go to trial? No. Uh, I've given up trying to predict that with precision. Is there a chance it could take so long that, that you know, you won't be Khalid Sheikh Mohammed's lawyer when this actually goes to trial? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm committed to, uh, I'm committed to seeing this through um, unless it becomes physically impossible. And if it does go to trial, regardless of the outcome, you know, there's, there's presumably going to be an appeals process, no matter which way it goes. Yeah. Uh, how long is that going to take? Well, that'll take 15 or 20 years. I think we're a good three, two, three, four years from a verdict at this point, uh, best case scenario. So we're looking at another 20, 25 years before this case is completely resolved. <laughs>